of Leonard Sachs, the chairman of the very popular BBC variety show, The Good Old Days, which was broadcast from Leeds here at the 150-year-old Leeds City Varieties, the oldest musical in the country, and it's located up this rather unassuming narrow lane, as you can see. In fact, here we are now. The Good Old Days was first broadcast in 1953, and it ran for an incredible 30 years, and it was responsible for making household names out of entertainers like Morecambe and Wise and Ken Dodd. This was invented by a man in America, a little baldy headed fellow called Kodak, and he has invented <laughs> this. Could I, have the, uh, could I, I want you to watch the birdie here. Now, right. The long-running show celebrated Britain's rich history of music hall entertainment, which spanned the mid-19th and 20th centuries. The format was simple. Popular entertainers would perform shows from the period while the audience dressed up in traditional Edwardian costumes. And it all happened in here. Gosh, this theatre is absolutely breathtaking. The moment you walk into the auditorium and you notice all the fixtures and fittings, your heart starts to beat faster. The excitement levels rise. And you see this, gilt, deep burgundy, lush fabrics on the seats. This is real history. Time has stood still. But, of course, Leeds City Varieties isn't just famous for staging the BBC's The Good Old Days. Acts such as a young Charlie Chaplin Harry Houdini and Marie Lloyd, the greatest music star of the day, all performed here on this very stage at the turn of the 19th century. And suppose it makes you fat, I don't worry over that. For the little of what you fancy does you good. And you can just imagine the atmosphere with a sea of faces all so close, looking at you, cheering, heckling and joining in. Bold and boisterous, but to be fair, the noise wasn't always down to the on-stage entertainment. Before the Leeds City Varieties became a music hall in 1865, it actually started life as a pub. The White Swan, or the Mucky Duck, as the locals at the time affectionately named it. Even as far back as 1766, the premises had a singing room at the back of the pub, which is now the stage of the City Varieties. The music halls differed from the more traditional theatres in that beer was allowed to be sold and drunk on the premises. That probably accounted for the rowdiness of the variety hall audiences because drinking played such a huge part in the appeal of the music halls in this country. Owners sometimes paid closer attention to the amount of beer they could sell rather than the quality of the entertainment. Someone who has appeared on this stage with the good old days is the president of the British Music Hall Society, Roy Hard. Give us a flavour of the atmosphere of the music hall when it was in its heyday. Well, it was, it was very much a working class uh, show sort of thing. Uh, and in the early days, of course, it was always based on booze. Right. You know, get in there and drink. Now, they found out, the publicans, after doing this for about 100 years, they suddenly realised that when certain customers said, we're coming in on Wednesday, uh, more people came in because they knew that those customers would sing something. So they started to draw people in. And so they started to pay the amateur singers, and that was how the whole business of musical really started. And eventually it became so popular these particular sing-song nights, that they started to build special buildings on the side of the pubs to accommodate right. the huge crowds that used to turn up. And they called them halls of music. Music hall. And that's, it's as simple as that. But the chairman was always very much in evidence in those early days, rather like Leonard Sachs did here. And the chairman was usually the bloke who owned the pub. Right, OK. And he, uh, and he booked there. the talent. He booked the talent. He knew exactly who his customers wanted to see. Sure. He booked the talent, and he'd sort of control it. Yeah. And the role of the chairman, when he used to bang his mallet and shout out, order, order, people think he did the same job as the speaker in the House of Commons, you know, yeah. uh, trying to control a drunken mob, you know, but not quite, because the original shout of order, order was to instruct the audience to order another round of drinks. And if they didn't, he wouldn't put the next turn on. So it was, come on, order, order, and I'll put him on. Order now, come on, all of you. Do you know, I never knew that. There you are. He says, a lot of things you don't know, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, developments in film and radio brought the curtain down on musical entertainment. 
Luckily, though, for the Leeds City Varieties, the BBC's decision to bring the good old days here gave the theatre a new lease of life. Again, Roy Hunt, who frequently appeared on the good old days. So let's talk about the good old days for you. The good old days, the television, it was fantastic. Over 30 years, it That's ran. Incredible. And was that a good break for you? It was a terrific break for so many people, yeah. Paul, because for the first time ever, you were presented in a proper way to an audience that wanted to be entertained. Yes. You know, and you wanted to do it because this atmosphere is fantastic. And on that stage, to get out there and work at that audience packed to the roof, That's and they all wanted to laugh. Oh, lovely. First of all, I must say how wonderful it is, folks, to be back here in Leeds again, the Miami of Yorkshire. <laughs> Was there extra pressure because this was being filmed and it was going out to an audience of sort of 12 to 18 yeah. million? That was the turning point for you? It, or, it wasn't the turning point, but my God, it did me a lot of good because mm. everybody saw the good old days. Mm. And so I got nice summer seasons and nice pantos and everything purely just by appearing on there. Don't forget, it was Les Dawson, Ken Dodd, uh, Ray Allen and Lord Charles. I watched it with my mum and dad. Well, there you are. They're, oh, they were in love with it. It was the first time I came across Danny LaRue. Well, indeed. You know, Danny oh, was one of his first <laughs> shows was here, yeah. Oh, what a beauty. Never seen one as big as that before. Oh, what a beauty. It must be two foot long or maybe more. It's such a lovely colour, nice and round as fat. I've never seen a mirror quite as big as that. Oh, what a beauty. Never seen one as big as that before. And you're still playing them? Yeah, oh, yeah. You've got your own chair here, haven't you? Well, I have indeed, yeah. No, I, I'm Try not sitting uh, in it. I think they've removed it after my last act. Although the variety circuit that's powered the music halls is long gone, it is still with us in some variation on our tellies now with shows like Britain's Got Talent. And as for the Leeds City Varieties itself, well, after a recent refurbishment, this place has never looked so good. And it will continue to be the country's oldest music hall.